Hello and welcome back. Sean here, Mountains Garage, on a beautiful Friday evening. Just about dusk, it was a spectacular day. I didn't get to spend a lot of time in the shop, so here I am. Tonight, putting the finishing touches on my 9-inch Ford project for my 49 Chevrolet pickup. Uh, the last few videos have been all about building this from this to what it is now. And tonight we're just putting on some brake lines. Last night the UPS brought my second set of quick performance axles that I installed along with the backing plates and the brakes. Everything fit nicely this time. All that's been covered. So tonight it's all about brake lines. Uh, I take it for granted because I've been doing them for so long, but this video we're going to talk about the ins and outs of making your own brake lines. And uh, I enjoy it. I find a lot of automotive stuff, like a lot of people don't like wiring. I decided just to embrace it, just like automatic transmissions. A lot of people not interested in touching them. I found it easier just to go in, and I didn't have a choice financially. I had to do it myself if I was going to, you know, fix my own stuff. So, uh, long story short, I just... Learn to at least tolerate everything, some jobs more than others, but brake lines and plumbing I find very soothing and I wish I could do more of it even. Now, things like this, now putting brake lines on an old rusty truck, you know, I've done plenty of that. So, on a, I can't speak for the other brands, but on a GM, muscle car area, 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 muscle car era vehicle or anything I'm going to be working on, every brake line in the car is 3 16 diameter except for the line that runs down the frame to the rear end and joins your flexible line. That's always been quarter inch. Now modern, like GM trucks, you know, in the 2000s, every brake line on its quarter inch, except for the axle lines, those are still 3 16 so your front brakes on a GM, I'll plumb it all in 3 16 Now I personally prefer, let's get, talk about some details. This is nickel copper line. It looks like copper line, but it's not. It's stronger than just copper line. You can't use that for brakes, so you shouldn't. Uh, but this is definitely flexible and easy to work with. I actually prefer the steel line. For whatever I'm building, hot rod wise, probably not going to see the salt. Uh, they make coated steel lines, but it's much harder to work with. But I grew up working on steel lines with my snap on flaring tool. So now. Uh, my snap-on flaring tool lives in the box because I have a better rig, which we're going to use in a minute. And for tonight, if I had enough steel line, I would have used it probably, but this was on the top of the pile. So that's what I got. And I have a whole plastic shoe box full of brake line fittings for 3 16 line tonight because that's what we're doing. So you need... This is a short version, they come in short and long. Either one will work. To be honest, I don't know why they ever made the long nut, but if I have them, I'll use them. It doesn't hurt anything if you have the space. So we're gonna, gonna try not to forget to put these on, but we'll see. So our layout, when I welded up the housing, I welded a quarter inch bolt here for my flexible line and I know this truck has a connection on the frame just about here so uh, it should come close if anything I'll move the bracket on the frame to make this work because I've already chosen where the flexible line is I just grind the galvanized off a quarter inch bolt I go ahead and make the head round I just put it in a drill hold it up to the grinder and I weld it on the housing and the first thing I do is put a flat washer so whatever I'm putting on there has a little, you know, shelf to sit on. So under this flexible line is a flat washer and on top another flat washer, a nut. 
another flat washer, a lock washer, and a nut. For the P clamps here, these are stainless so they won't rust out. Amazon, they were cheap ish, 100 pack. And there's no room on the top to put another flat washer, so there's a flat washer underneath the clamp, the clamp, lock washer, and a quarter inch nut. Not fancy. So I gave, you know, the, the lines are mounted here, and I put one over here on this side of the vent, knowing I had to make my way to the back of the axle tube for this end. And this has to have clearance for the U-bolts right now. That's why it's not touching. I just scratched the heck out of my leg on some jagged steel. I don't know if you can see it, but you think I would push that in or do something about it. Instead, all summer, I just bock up my legs and bleed a lot. So I am going to, we're going to make this line here. I go ahead and, you know, put the nut on, flare this end, install it here, and then I, you know, rough it out. And I just take a wild guess and cut it off. Not scientific at all. I always start with the long one. That way if I mess it up, it'd probably fit over here. <laughs> but I have a tendency to make them too short. So this one actually came out pretty good. It's the right length. I'm all primed up now. Let's build this side. So you start with your roll of line. They make a line straightener. I was just looking at them last night. I've never had one, but it would roll over here and you could make it straight. This stuff is so flexible. Uh, see, I don't have any problem. I have lots of tubing benders. The best ones God gave me are right here, my thumbs and my hand. Even with steel line, if I need to make the curl, you know, for body flex, for the, be able to, so the cab can move on the frame, on the brake lines that go to the master cylinder, I just do it all by hand. I'll find a piece of metal, even a, a paint can's a little big, but it depends on the vehicle. You're going to make three circles in it just to give it some flexible stuff. All done by hand. I prefer to do it that way. And this stuff is so easy to work with. So it's been cut off, but you have to address the fact that there's not a perfectly round hole. I don't know what you call this rig, a deburr for pipe. You go to Home Depot or Lowe's, it's in the plumbing section. It's made for a plumber on probably a bigger line, but this side has got a cone and you can do the inside. And this uh, nickel copper is so easy to work with. It doesn't take much to clean out the inside. And this end is external. You know, it's cut down into a little teepee. So it does the outside, takes the burrs off. Now we have a perfect hole to work with. We'll put the nut over it. Now, when you're doing the first end, if you forget the uh, tube nut, you can always slip it on the other direction. But in this case, in all cases, try to remember to put it on there. It's just easier. Now I'm gonna go over to the machine and flare this end and I'll come back. We'll measure up the line and then we'll both flare the other end. So. Hang on just a minute. We're back. There's almost no need to shut the camera off. It's almost that fast. So now we have a perfect flare. Again, we'll cover that in a minute. Now we just need to stretch her out a little bit. Super easy to work with. We want to just thread it on here. Try not to scratch up my paint. Give her a little angle. Start the nut. I like to go ahead and hand tighten it so I'm not putting any stress on my nut, my, uh, my new flare I should say. So this is going to come down past here, like that, and then we got to kind of guesstimate how much it's going to take to do what I want to do around the U-bolts and end up over here. So I actually just kind of mark it about halfway across the brake drum. Take it back off. Hope I'm not blocking you too bad now. We got a section all marked. Need a tubing cutter. This used to be made by a company called Imp. So out of habit, I call it get my imp. If you're working with me and I say, can I borrow your imp? This is what I mean. Working in the transmission business, you made a lot of cool lines. 
this was very normal. So this stuff cuts like a dream. Just keep tightening up the wheel, spinning it around, and eventually you'll be through it. So now, this can get out of the way. Store that for later. If you don't want to forget the nut, you can go ahead and put it on now before we start. Make sure the right direction. Yep. Need to dress the end again. Doesn't take much steel. You got to work it a little harder. This one doesn't require much. Now you see me blowing it out. After I make it, I'm going to clean it thoroughly. So now let me set you up over at the flaring machine. Okay, you're set up. A little more difficult for me, but that's okay. So I bought this at Eastwood a long time ago. This is the, uh, what should we call it, the turret for 45 degree brake line. When this whole rig was still popular back when they came out 15 years ago, I also bought the 37 degree turret so I can do AN lines as well, but brake lines are 45 degree double flare. Your inserts are all marked on the end. This is, says 45 degree, 3 16 The other end would be for a bubble flare. So we need the 45 degree end, make sure they're both facing the right way. I go ahead and shove them right up against operation zero. I see a lot of people use these online. I've said it before, they try to eyeball how to get the line in the machine correctly. That's what Operation Zero is for. So you need this fairly straight, just enough to get it through here. You can see what happens, you shove it right through. I wanna go ahead and close this down and put a little tension here, not much. Because Operation Zero shoves everything back the correct depth. Now you tighten it. Now, the line is in the inserts, the correct amount. Now you just go over to operation one of 3 16 Right there. They're all marked on top. Kind of hard to read. It's got the correct uh, forming die to make the first flare. This is my handle. All I'm going to do is pull it until it's tight. Now we need to go to operation two, which is this one. And just like that, we're done. Loosen this up, pull the pin, flip it up, give us a wiggle. You got yourself a perfect flare. Now I'm gonna blow this out with carb cleaner, both directions, and then with air, both directions. Meet you back over at the bench. And we're back and the line is clean. So at this point, it doesn't really matter which end you start with, but I believe it was this side is where I started. No, nope. probably this side. So let's just put it on loosely. Sorry for blocking you. Let's go ahead and start that in there. I'll go ahead and semi snug it. There we go. Lays in here pretty good. Before you get too carried away bending it, my chair here. I'm gonna go ahead and bend it and then put it in the wheel cylinder. Sorry if I block it. I'll try not to. When you're starting the lines for the first time, just make sure they go in easy and by hand. You gotta kinda figure which angle you need. Yeah. Go ahead and snug this down. We're not going to tighten it without the tubing wrench, but we'll just get it 
tight because I, again, I don't want to strain my flap. So now we're connecting on both ends. I think the length is going to be pretty good. You want to go oops, get this up to the clamp. So we're going to go this way a little bit. I'll go ahead and put my P clamp on. Put a nut in the washer. We got lots of forming to do yet, but so it gives me an idea what it's going to look like. Don't tighten that all the way because I don't want it to rub on the housing. And I know over here I need room for the U bolts. I want it to look kind of pretty in its own way. fit. I don't want to rub in the housing. I want it to look pretty uniform there. That's pretty good. This is a tubing wrench. You can see the wrench goes most of the way around the nut. I'm going to go ahead and tighten stuff up for real. And the first time you want to go pretty tight with the nut because you're kind of forming or finishing forming the flare, the double flare. So don't be scared to tighten it right up. Yeah. Before this actually goes into service, I will take, before I attempt to bleed the brakes, which I'm going to use gravity, I will take the bleeder screw right out and put Nevises on it and put it back in, just on the threads. This vehicle will never see salt unless I go to Bonneville, <laughs> but still, I do the same for everything because I don't want trouble down the road that I could have prevented with about one penny's worth of Nevises. So it does no harm to put it on the threads. We're good. So other than minor tweaking, that's my method of building brake lines. The crimping tool, uh, they used to be when I bought that at Eastwood, it's about $200. Nowadays, I see Vivor has a copy of it. Probably works fine. I haven't bought one. Uh, I never thought there'd be anything better than my snap-on double flaring tool until I got, you saw how fast that rig is. It is definitely hard to beat. It's perfect flare every time. The only mistake is if you forget to put the nut on. So it's awesome. Uh, again, $200 or less. Be aware that not all of them have the insert have a feature on the other end. This one does 45 degree on one end and bubble flare, metric bubble flare on the other end. Make sure you have that and while it's relevant, if you can get the 37 degree option or if you want that in the future, if you're going to do AN lines that have 37 degree flares, then you ought to get it while you can and uh, put it all together in one kit. The kit, the plastic box, it gives you already room for the 37 degree inserts and the turret. That just comes apart. The turret just sits right over the little stud it has on the tool. The handle comes off. It all fits in the case. You put it away for next time. So, Other than adding oil, yeah, I had a big ugly plug in here if you were, you've been watching all the videos. I found this one the other day. It's better looking. Until such time, you don't have a half inch square to drive it with on the side of the road. For whatever reason, you want to check your gear oil or add some. So, I also want to add a note. If you've been watching the videos on this rear end, uh, it has seals in the housing ends and the axle seals on that. There's an inner seal. It has a sealed bearing. When I ordered the second set of axles, not only do I have the seal in the housing end, I asked for O-ring bearings, so the outer dimension of the axle bearing, wheel bearing, has an O-ring as well, a little Vaseline on the housing end when I put it together, 
Now I'm double sealed. So I'm sealed on the outside. I'm sealed against gear oil on the inside. If the inner seal fails, it's still not, it's not gonna get out to the brakes. It costs nothing to ask for the O-ring groove option. And uh, if you don't have it, that's fine. But in this case, I'm double sealed. So Friday night, hope you have a great one and uh, a nice weekend. I'll talk to you soon. Take her easy.